Ronnie Dahl, four-wheeling at westernaustralia.com. Welcome to the 2017 Perth four-wheel drive and adventure show. In this video, we are going to do a bit of a walk around like we did last year, except for this time, we're going to give you some specific tips on what you actually need when you go four-wheel driving. And of course, have a bit of a gander and introduce you to a few people that we caught up with. Enjoy. We're now at the, let's turn around so you can actually see me. We're now at the ARB tent. And uh, as I was speaking about earlier, I'm actually looking for a new swag to try out. Let's have a look at these swags. I've seen a few people use them on our tag alongs. You would. <laughs> Are you reckon it's short? Yeah. I reckon it just looks short because it's wide. In, in you go. Once I got a pillow, my feet will get too old. Yeah, but how tall are you again? Uh, six foot. Six, no, you're six foot. 184 centimetres. No, I'm 187. Yeah, you are tall. Am I taller than you? Like, these days. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's wide enough. Yeah, good width. There's a small one over here. You got the dark here. So, to overseas viewers in America. Uh, you're always wondering why these things are called a swag. I don't know why they're called swag. <laughs> they're like called swag. Coffin. It's like a canvas coffin. That's a pretty accurate description mm -hmm. with a lot of room though. So it's like it's like uh, an Egyptian style king's <laughs> tomb. Except for it's a canvas. Sarcophagus. Sarcophagus. <laughs> so tools, which one would be good to tow a boat with like a small... Wow. Well, tow a boat reasonably or my way? No, like, just like tow on a boat. One of these. One of those, okay. Yep. Well, there you go, there's a perfect example. A jet ski probably weighs just the same as a. Um... Yep, we're getting ideas. I wouldn't mind for one trip, at, at least one trip this year. Haul a quad. And, no, I can't, I can't haul that. Haul a quad on a boat. That'll be awesome fun on the dunes. You'll bend your dunes. Yeah, you'll be filling up fuel everywhere. You don't want that. <laughs> the way you drive. <laughs> and here we have the star of the show, the Tonka truck. So Tonka and Toyota got together and built this pretty cool looking beast. What are the chances of borrowing this for a weekend? <laughs> There's the slight problem that the portals aren't 80 open on it yet. On this one. They yeah. are on 79s in this state, but the Hilux IFS haven't been 80 open on Alright, so we're here with the Tonka truck. What's your name, buddy? Ross. Ross. There you go. Nice to meet you, I uh, understand you're a viewer of the channel as well? Yeah, subscriber. Good stuff, subscriber. Um, Tonka truck. It's Toyota Hilux. Yep, Toyota Hilux SR5, uh, standard 2.8 turbo diesel with a six speed auto. Um, basically designed by the designers over in Melbourne. Uh, it's a collaboration between Toyota and Tonka. Portal axles, front and rear. Well, I, like, um, I like how they pushed out. Yeah, it's, it's, I think you've got an extra 150 mil either side yeah. pushing it out and then about an extra 150 mil clearance with the portals. You get your racing coilovers in the front with the tubular A-arms. Uh, King's shockies, remote reservoir shockies in the front. Obviously the diffs have some major bracing in there as well. So you guys been jumping this thing? It did a little bit of air this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Intentional air? Yeah, yeah, well Rick put his nice. boot in a bit as he well. A 
list of things you absolutely need for four wheeling for getting out there. Like not all the, you know, not, not, we're not talking lifts and all this kind of stuff. We're talking about what you actually need, essential items to go four wheeling. <coughs> I'll kick it off with compressor, tire compressor. I'd say recovery kit. That's a good one. That's two. Coms. Coms is a really important one. Even just a little just handheld. Just handheld. Yeah. Anything. Alright, back on me. Uh, I'll say basic tools. Basic tools. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'd say maybe a first aid kit. That's a good one. First aid yeah. kit. Yeah. That's a really good one. Even if you don't know how to use it, at least you got one. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should really learn how to use it. Um, tire repair kit. Special one drives the car. Yeah. It's special. It's not a Okay, um, fire extinguisher. Yeah. Fire extinguisher. Some dodgy wiring. Oh, just, just in general. <laughs> yeah. You know, long grass, whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, true. Um, I'd say good set of tyres. Um, just up a bit from the um, highway, you know. You, you could drive with highway. Yeah, but I'd say it's a mistake, you know. Yeah, true. You do, a tire, I mean, you do have a tire repair kit added to the list, but then you can't fix the sidewalls, which is a weak part. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess ATs would probably be your first more expensive mod you need to do. Um, what else we got? I mean, that's pretty much all you really need. Isn't it? Depending on how long you go for and where you go. Well, it's just a starting thing, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, I will, I will add one. Yeah, max tracks. Yeah, I reckon you need max tracks, like. Um, or recovery board equivalent. It doesn't have to be max trucks, just a recovery board equivalent. Yeah, there's so many out there, all different types of roll up small as well. Yeah. So that way you've got, you know, even those bog bags we were yeah. talking about yesterday. Yeah, the special bags. Yeah. yeah. So at least then you can self recover. You can't self recover with a recovery kit, but you still need to have a recovery kit. To just get out there and start going and see if you actually want to do it. Just buy cheap of everything we've just talked about and then from there you can decide what it is you want to spend your money on. One more thing I want to add to this list and that is um, perhaps a bottle jack that's a little bit taller if you yeah, even if you don't go to lift your full drive uh, sometimes you know rough off-road terrain it won't be level underneath your vehicle so a bottle jack that can lift more weight I would say is another essential thing so but keep your, keep your old bottle jack because it's good to have the two bottle jacks and I'll explain this in another video. Now this was a really short list, a uh, short explanation. So what I think we'll do is in a later video we'll do a whole discussion on what you actually really need for essential stuff and what you probably don't need. Um, and because look, we can talk about that for, a, for quite a while because we can go into a lot more detail. Checking out a Darchi 270, 270 was it? 270. 270. Roughly 12 square metres of coverage. One thing I do like about this that you don't see on many other awnings is the fact that it angles out. So you can actually put stuff to the side. Yeah, so if you have a, I don't know if you've got a cruiser that's really high like this, like about eight foot, but the lower your car, the more of a tape you get as well. So you get more room. Okay. Pretty cool. <laughs> I will say though, it is pretty damn hot in here. Yeah, it's pretty damn hot. Can you open up any? any can you open up any more? You can open them all up. You can open okay. any panel. You can open up. And this is outside. Obviously, their show car because they got two rooftop tents on it. On the Ranger. Yeah, let's walk around and see what else we can find. So I got Mark here. Mark is a mate of mine from Rhino Hall. Yeah, mate. How you going? Yeah. You want to have a look at it? Yeah. Well, this is a 200. We had a guy on um, previous um, tag along trip with the Rhino Hall stuff. It's pretty so cool stuff. This is it. This so is when it. are you going to make it for the 70? You going to make it for the 70? I want to make it for the 70, man. <laughs> you know, you know I want it for the 70. It's too late for me anyway, <laughs> but yeah. We need to give you some very deep polishing to get your 70 sorted. Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, look, hopefully in the next 12 months we'll have it for the 70. Yeah. So that's the standard panel in the grey. And we wrap this one. So that's that's another. That's pretty cool. How you a panel it. under a panel under a panel. Yeah. And we did a, a decal wrap down the whole side, so the whole car's got it on. Yep. But uh, yeah, it looks looks pretty good, just for the show. Yep. TJ, I'm getting a free plug there. Yeah, yeah. You guys owe me a beer. 
Mark's alright, because I know him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, mate. Yeah, so this comes in the kit bag, and everything packs in here, it weighs 12 kilos in the bag, once you're done. So, yeah, pretty lightweight, it's not adding to a lot of weight to the vehicle. Um, go through anything, I think, well, you saw it with Manuel in his yeah. 200. Just go through anything. No scratches. So, mainly FJs, 200. So, we've got FJ, we've got Ranger. expanded a bit. Yeah, we've got Ranger, there's some photos on there of some of our customers. 200 oh, Series, yeah. FJ, Ranger, Colorado, Mark II Ranger. Mm. BT50 and Trailblazer. Actually, Andrew, expand, Andrew Fan's expand, on this expand. car as well. Andrew, yeah, Andrew, Andrew Fan. Fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was on one of the trips. He was one of the first customers that we had. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. he, he I loves know it. That. Well, he's yeah. been gone. He's had it two and a half years now. And yeah, loves it. He sprayed it up, changed the colour of it. Awesome. It's looking good. Well, I have to ask you about your uh, your hiking story one time. It was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave it off for this one. <laughs> There's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hope we can go check out some more stuff. Check eh? out some more stuff. Yeah. Mm. I just found a dodgy character at the show. I'm tracking him right now. Make sure he doesn't do anything he's not supposed to. Excuse me, sir. Can I check your pockets? No. <laughs> you can check your fridge. What are you doing here, you dodgy bastard? You didn't leave it in there, did you? Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, you wanker. It is still there. It's getting nice and cool for you. Yeah. I'm not, not going to tell you what's, what he left in there. It's not appropriate for kids. You should have a look. If no. You're, if you're at the show, and if, when this got, if, you're, if this is This isn't live, live. this isn't live. No, definitely right. not, man. Look at my Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Look at this one. This is a big, this is a big bow show. Yeah, 5.75 rated. So I think it's a five time mold, five time safety factor. So okay. Are you sure this is enough for your fat 80? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It could be brick proof. And then this is 10 ton. It's got a it's greasable and stuff, so. That's pretty, That's pretty cool. cool. Ten tons. So what's that in pounds? Uh, that'd be twenty-two thousand. What so brand is it? Double line. Our back Outback armor. Still a and a water load brand, are they? Yeah, I guess so. Greasable. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's all on bearings, which is and you can see you can actually remove it all, mm. which I so it's serviceable, which I like. Did I suit Toyota? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does it, does it use a fifty-four mil socket? <laughs> Hopefully that fits through your... Well, do you know what I bought yesterday? What? I was smearing it in keeping here. Yeah? What? I bought a giant emoji poo. Inflatable. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have from? You know you want one. I never thought I'd find a gift for my daughter at a full drive show. And there we have it. The poo emoji. <laughs> she loves poo emojis. Alright, you got me one? There we go. Right. Let's go buy a poo emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Meet Joe Clues. She's very well known in WA for her cooking and baking with camp ovens. Oh, what's cooking? Oh, scones right now, but kangaroo's milk more importantly. <laughs> I'll put you on the spot here, I'm filming. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. fine, you can put me on the spot. We can actually put sugar in, so uh -huh. one of them and one of them. So there's about four cups of self-raising flour in there and a whole can carton of cream. And about 300 millilitres of um, lemonade. Well, yes, yes. So now, Ronnie, the secret when it comes to making scones or scones, scones, scones. as some people call them, is that once you've mixed your mixture like that, you don't need it. Don't need it. Do not need Keep it. Keep it fluffy. Keep it nice and fluffy. Okay. Scones and damper are not like bread. Bread loves to be kneaded. Scones don't. So all you need to do. Is just put a decent amount of flour out onto your board, pat it down. I'll put some more on that because it's not quite enough. And now I do actually have a scone cutter in my utensil box. Scone cutter. But generally I don't travel with a scone cutter. So sharp knife, and that I just cut one end off. And because I've got lots of people that I'm making scones for, I make little ones. Smaller sizes. Yeah, so just cut it up into to little bits like that and then uh, cut the ends off. Now the reason why I'm cutting the ends off is because you need to have a nice clean edge. So along here, so if you use a cup or a glass to actually press your spawns out with, what that's, it that's does... That's another way to do it? You no. Know. No. Okay. <laughs> what it does, it actually compresses the dough like ah. that. 
Okay. Because it doesn't have a sharp rim. And then it doesn't go fluffy and, and then it's more it like doesn't, a damper then. Yeah, then it doesn't rise up mm. nice and evenly. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you end up with ones that have sort of fallen up all over the place. So. Okay. Presentation is everything, you see. Um, so and we taste. need. <laughs> so we're using the lemonade instead of sugar. I like that idea. Yes, yeah. yeah. So you don't actually have to have, um, have the sugar. And have it done with Land it. Land Rover behind us here. Yes, his name's Lionel. Lionel? Yeah. <laughs> Lionel Richie? Lionel Land Rover. Lionel Land Rover. Yeah. And this is another little thing that I've discovered too, that if you don't want to go endlessly washing stuff up, because when I'm here doing my demos, I'm on my own. So I'm going to be out the back washing things. So your baking paper, and just pop them on to your little tray. And that little tray there fits perfectly inside my um, big hillbilly. So uh, ah, so we're using the hillbilly. Yeah, yeah. Um, just got the, there, yeah. yeah, it's just down there. My coals are just starting to uh, get to a point where I can actually start putting some scones through. I noticed when I came past yesterday you had all the coals around the outside. The outside the edge too. of the lid. Yep, yeah, that's right. Middle. No, because when I put my tray of scones into the camp oven, they're going to go in the middle. Okay. I do not want to have all that heat lasting straight down on top of the scones for so 15 sort of minutes. Evenly. I want it to be around the edges and I want the heat to be to conducted down, down the, the sides. Side. Yeah, uh -huh. and because it's the hot air on the inside that actually cooks your food, mm -hmm. not the direct heat from the heat source. Okay. Yeah, so it's basically you need to have that. Um, and when I'm cooking bread, so I will actually arrange my coals just down both sides of the bread. Oh, in line with the yep. length of the bread? Yep. That's handy tonight. Mm -hmm. So, because when it comes to cooking bread, you're looking at a, a, an extended period of time. So you're looking at around about 30 minutes, possibly more for a full loaf of bread. And the most common thing that most people end up having happen when they're cooking, they'll cook stews and roasts and burnt bottom dampers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, too much heat underneath. Too much heat underneath. Most heat on top, guys. Yes, and girls. Yeah, that's, yep. that's the one thing that I get people to try and take away with them mm. is always less heat underneath, more heat on top. Yeah. Because it's far more controllable that way. Yeah, it's so, more, more controllable yep. than, than a trivet, I find. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> never yes, use a true. trivet for a damper. I've done that once before. <laughs> <laughs> I sink all the way through. Goes that's through. why I use these little trays. Mm. Yeah, because basically it, um, they're, they're oh. light as anything. They're, they're don't take up much room in your And you could use kit. that as a piece of tray too. That's exactly what I use that for and it's exactly what it's meant to be for. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I reckon we'll come back when these are done. Oh please do. Yeah. Yes, please do. I'll have and to show you my um, honey damper. Honey damper. That mm. sounds nice. So you don't need to add sugar in it. It's just, of course you've got yeah. the honey in it instead. Yeah. Honey, that would be water, yep. flour, Yep. done. Okay. Oh beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't changed much from all those years ago when they started making dampers, really, no, has it? Hasn't, no. no. I mean, my, my recipe, all it is, is just um, self raising flour, salt, water, and some oil. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah, oil's good for your hands, too, thank you. It'll stick your hands. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Someone told me that on YouTube, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Joe, I'll let you go. Yeah, we'll, come back when we'll they're come back later. Yeah, That's right, come back when they're cooked. Cool. <laughs> See ya. No worries. Unfortunately, I got sidetracked at my own stand. But here are some photos of some previous ones that Joe has done and they were in there for about 15 minutes. That's it. Pretty quick turnaround. So here we are. I'm in a military 6x6 G wagon. Pretty cool rig. I'm a big fan of camouflage and army stuff so that's pretty cool sitting in here. Hey you got max tracks too. <laughs> this is serious stuff. Brings a new mini to trip carry, doesn't it? I wonder how much it weighs. Uh, 15 tons. 
Full goes, and 15 seconds. goes through walls and fences. Yeah. And it floats too, I'll take it. I'm just checking out a few products here. This is the old uh, pop up tent. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Jess, so do you try and time a 10? How you going Jess? Good, running yourself. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Just to tell people who may not know your stuff and Facebook. Dodge Jilleroo Jess. Some, some of you might have seen it before. Um, basically I had a video go viral a while back and now I'm, I'm from the bush and doing a bit of four drive stuff in between. Awesome, good stuff. Is that the video where someone's packed off? Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Was, it was a bit of a near miss in the truck and um, okay. the sarcasm bomb just built up and exploded. <laughs> Jess drives a road train. Yes. So, triple carriage? Um, can be a double, triple, or license up to a quad. Well, you can get lots of quads. Yeah. You can do quads and double right? Yeah, they're, they're, the testing, they're testing super quads up north at the moment. Super quads. So. <laughs> That's awesome. How many wheels yeah. in super quads? Oh, I don't know. 62, um, maybe more. I don't yeah. know. Right. Don't make me count on the spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I reckon we go check out your rig, um, 79 Cruiser. Go check it out. First thing I want to look at is this here. Is this true? No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but looking at the bull bar, you'd almost believe it. Yeah, oh yeah, I love this bull bar, eh? So this is a four poster, right? Yeah, four then, poster. How hey, you find the, uh, the Cruiser? Yeah, it's good. Recently did a little bit of um, filming at the Terrain Tamer and they, uh, they put a few bits and pieces in it, which, which did make quite a difference in the. Um, Drivability and everything coming down south of here. So, oh, so you drove all the way from where? Carafa. Carafa. Yeah, so what, 1600 Ks to um, to Perth from Carafa. What have we done to the, to the donk? Right, well, it's got a catch can, so just to catch all the bits and pieces coming through the air there, make the air a bit more pure. Got a Safari Armax chip in that. Um, they've added a new setting to it that I haven't tested out yet, but it's a full cool drive setting. So, Off the low range? Yeah, so you know sometimes you go on a rough ground and... Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so is it more doughy pedal? Yeah, just the yeah. first bit of it's doughy, so... Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so. I've done something similar to mine here with a low range tune. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I haven't tested yeah. it out yet. So. Different shit, but yeah. I'll have to give it a go. We've got a secondary filter in there. Yeah. Is there a diesel filter? Yeah. Um, we've got a, a bigger snorkel on it, get some more air going in it. You can tell you're from the north because you've got two tyres. Two spares. <laughs> yeah. But someone pinched my um, kangaroo jack. I was oh, at really? the shops and someone stole it out of the back. So oh, I have yeah. to go get one here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> welcome to Perth. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that happens here. Yeah. Let's go meet Bungie. Yeah. How was Bungie? He's only about six months old. Six months old? Yeah. He is a pup. He's doing pretty well, considering considering he's never seen so many people before. Yeah, it was a pretty busy show. Yeah. And uh, coming from where you come from, and there's too many people over. Yeah, nah. So, I think um, he's enjoyed it. Jillaroo Jess, yep. so it'll be on the screen right now. Uh, in the description below, you can head to her Facebook page and Instagram, right? Yeah, Instagram as well. And see more of this yep. rat bag. <laughs> yep, live filming, filming with pets, it doesn't work. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, appreciate your time. Yeah, and thanks, Bungie. Yeah, you too. Yeah. See you, Bungie. We got a re-sprayed Land Cruiser here. I like the colour. Pretty cool colour. Alright, open country. That's what I currently have. 25,000 Ks on. Alright, this is a new one. I thought it had a name like a ridge, ridge grabber or something. So this looks like a hybrid tyre. Looks very similar to the general I used last time. Except for it. The pattern doesn't go completely across like the general did. This one has it in the middle. Still looks like aggressive though, doesn't it? Mm. Pretty good looking tire, eh? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So, what's your name, mate? Dave from Toyota. Dave. There you go, there you go mate. Hey um, guys. Yeah. So, what were you saying about this tire here? Like same construction as the open country, the mud terrain, but. Yep. 
what's, what's the difference? So basically the Open Country RT, it's been out in the US for a little bit now. It uses the, the same construction as our very puncture resistant Open Country MT. Nice and thick sidewall, big turn up construction up to here so you get double your plies on the side, effectively six physical plies. But it's using a compound that's a lot closer to our all-terrain, the Open Country AT2. It's got a bit of cut chip resistance in it. It should get you some longer Ks and just be a good aggressive tourer. Okay, so compounds. What's what's a different compound on a mud terrain and, a, and an all terrain? So an all terrain will be aimed more at your longer wear, longer life, and um, you know, especially the the AT2 that doesn't have the cut chip resistance that this RT will have. Whereas a mud terrain, they're that little bit softer to give you the bite on on mm. rocks and through mud. And to work so we're a bit faster when you're on the highway and stuff. As well. That's it. Yeah. But as we've seen from your sort of stuff, you guys are getting some pretty decent Ks out of these things. And you know, you look after these right. We say to people between forty to seventy thousand Ks out of a set of mud terrains. But your mate over there on the stand does ninety thousand on his, and they still seem yeah, to be going. Yeah, Torben. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. So unless you are going to play in the mud a lot and on the clay and the hard rocks, all terrain you'd say. Yeah. From a tyre perspective, all you? trains work pretty well all and around. I'd say the same. The way we break it down is, you know, you, you go your mud terrain for extreme puncture resistance purely through the thickness of yeah, the true. case and the self-cleaning pattern. But in all terrain, they'll be a little bit lighter in their construction. You get better fuel economy out of them. And they're quieter. Mm. As well. Cheaper to buy, longer Ks, quieter. You know, they do the job on most people's vehicles in most applications, but if you're out there rock hopping or doing some really aggressive stuff, mud trains you've good bet. Yeah, or if you want puncher resistance. That's it. So, anyway, if you've got more questions about mud terrain versus all terrain, there's another video on that, but uh, let's keep moving. Cheers, mate. Cheers, no worries. Imagine trying to get this off the back of your car with the rim on it. <laughs> That's 37. It looks like 35. Uh, it's because of the rim. The rim's pretty big. Oh, yeah, 17, 18. Yeah, 17. Talking about tyres, um, we just came from the Toyo stand. You know what? I, I wouldn't mind trying these out, to be honest. Trepidors. I know they'll sound horrible on the road. They'll probably wear really fast. But they are a really cool tyre. They look awesome. They look tough. It'll be really good on muddy terrain, but really unpractical probably on the highway. Be good as a play set. Yeah. You need money be. for a play set. I reckon I'll, I'll fit in this tyre. Go on. <laughs> Wayne says he can fit in that tyre. Now he has to do it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is going to be pretty hard. Will he fit? <laughs> yeah, I'll hold it for you so you don't fall over. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Oh, I'm going to do this. There he goes. When he's in, flip it over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't jump. <laughs> well, here we have Summit Exhibitions Rig. He's another YouTuber. Pretty cool looking rig actually. Oh, it looks like he's got the new grapplers. Yeah. I reckon they look pretty cool. Alright, this is the yellow cab stand. Love the troopies. Well, that's something a bit amusing to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Size comparison. Yeah. How do you go with that, Torben? I reckon your swag's about the same size as that. Yeah. This is a fit well. I reckon I'll have a gag just watching you sit in that car. <laughs> I'd have to sit in the back seat. Oh, uh, two wheel drives at the full drive show. Oh. What do you got here, Ronnie? Oh, Looks like an ejection seat. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bullshit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Seatbelt on. <laughs> Is it? Is 
On our live feed during the show, someone asked if uh, we get any Ivecos over here. Yes, we do. Still comes from the east, but. Oh, yeah, this, this one's from Victoria. But yes, we do have them here. On the back, I noticed it's got a winch cradle. Because you got the rollers here. Parabolic suspension. Just been told this is aircraft aluminium, super light. And some chap in WA has actually bought this a couple of days ago, I've just been told. So I might have to try and get hold of him once he's done a few more mods to it. Be interesting to see. They come out with a 90 litre tank, apparently, which seems a bit minuscule for the size of the vehicle. Just be a 90 litre tank. Probably's got a bit of fuel range in the cruiser, but. Yeah, probably. But it does have uh, long range tanks on, he was saying. Added on to it. Wayne's checking out some seat covers. Uh, this cruiser here's caught my eye because of the well body. Don't see this very often on on Land Cruisers okay. here in Australia. Yeah. Normally you get the tray. Oh, the new ARB fridge. You've been talking about this one, Wayne. Yeah, it's not bad, eh? I went into a competition for it. <laughs> Are these ones you can lock with a yeah, yeah, passcode? Yeah, there's a code there, yeah. All oh, right, so you, you do the sequence on that? Yeah. Okay. You can go four, I think it's like a four sequence, so you can go like one, two, three, two. Oh, yeah, okay. <coughs> I do like the gas shot in that. As I said, mate, I was looked after by the boys. Just a bit. Of the struts. This actually folds it there. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. I suppose this hand gives what this one would do with it. Nope. So here is a quick snippet from our stand when we announced the winner of the main prize. <laughs> The giveaway that I did at the show. So you may or may not know about this one, but I broadcast live a couple of times. Those videos are on the channel somewhere. The first prize. This is the whole thing. The first prize. Tip the whole bucket on him. Yeah. Are you gonna pick it up? Yeah. Are you gonna help me pick it up? Corey Harland. Oh. At well. <laughs> Corey Harland at work. You can't, can't hear any screaming. <laughs> you can come here and help us clean this mess up. Alright, well that's the first uh, first prize. So you win the first prize, so get in contact with us. Tell them much? Yeah, we have been flat out, you know. Yeah, we have been busy. You've been flat out sitting in the chair? Yeah, the last half hour, that's about it. The last half hour or three quarters of an hour I've been dead, but apart from that, I've been flat out. So we sold a fair bit of merch and uh, get on our store, check out our merch. Something here I uh, have been given as a gift. I ain't got one at all. Now in the Land Cruiser, there aren't many cup holders. Well, there's one cup holder, it's bloody dismal. And that's one of the things I don't like about the Land Cruiser. You love, you love Bubble Rock? Yeah, he does, he does. <laughs> So, it did go 4x4, gave me this one. That looks really good quality, actually. So, this bolts on to the seat, does it? Yeah, take the two seat bolts out. Seat bolts out? And put them back on. That okay. Back well, on. if I get it done and take a photo before this video goes up, it'll be on the screen. But yeah, two cup holders. Sweet. And the cutouts are for square cartons, which we only get in WA and Northern Territory. I'm sure you might get them somewhere else in the world. Yeah, cool. So looking forward to putting that in. Yeah. Um, shout out to Create Ranger Parks. I want to give these guys a shout out because um, they've got this program going where there's a lot of um, lands that have been taken over by the government, Department of Parks and Wildlife. So what this mob are doing, they're trying to open it up and restore all the wells and stuff that are out there on these old pastoral lands that have now been taken over by the government and use them as recreational lands. So this could potentially open up a lot more um, places to go full driving and stuff. Now I'll get some information of them and it'll be on the screen as I'm talking about it. 
But um, if you want to know more, the link's down in the description below. A lot of links in the description below. Frequent asked questions at the show. I'm going to start because I know you, you got a good one. Yeah. My one's been more about the videos coming up. So I'm right now editing the Kimberly series. As you're watching this, I'm editing it. Uh, it's a big one. It's 400 gigabytes. I'm going to go through it all. Hopefully soon. And then after that, it's a bit of a muddy trip to answer all those guys who requested the, uh, you know, the mud sling and winching kind of stuff. I end up in all kinds of trouble, don't I? Yeah. All right, what was your question? You got asked a lot. I've been asked, uh, why do I coach your spares? Um, I've just said, look, I mean, the trips we've been doing lately, like the three week trip or two week remote trips, you know, even though we have six spare tires between us, you know, you probably think I do you know, the tires, but once you stake one and you're in the middle of nowhere, it's in the back of your mind that this is my last tire. <laughs> so yeah, having another yeah. one, it definitely sells the nerves, but. Um, I mean, if you're only going on a three-day trip, something where you're not you know, up in the middle of nowhere, then one is definitely sufficient. You never know, but you never know. The biggest question I got asked: Well, about your travel buddy? No, not my travel buddy. Power. That's it. How do we go about having power. enough power to run our fridges and camera gear? Mm. So that's something I struggle with at the moment. Yeah. I think my I think my answer is going to be lithium, but yeah. So you want to answer? Well, in your way of what you asked. In my opinion, AGM is the best way to go if you want to be cost effective. So, but so you've got you to got remember, two, you got two though. I have two, but what people don't realise is with AGM and most batteries, except for lithium, you can't actually run them below 50% without damaging. So, yes, that's So you true. have to remember, if you've got 100 amps, you've actually only got 50. Yeah, you've only so. got 50 amps, but then your volts, um, Decrease and your amps increase, yeah, so it goes even quicker. It so can damage your, your um, you know, your accessories that you're running as well. Yep. That's right. All right. That, that could be. We need to do a whole discussion video on just that. Oh yes. That. Well, the question for me most of the time was where is Ronnie and when is Ronnie coming back? <laughs> oh come on! I was here most of the time. And uh, uh, when is the jeep coming back? Yes, that was <laughs> the biggest <laughs> one. <laughs> when is the jeep coming back? There's yeah, a jeep coming. Soon. Okay, <laughs> do, you want, do you want to tell the audience what's going on? Because we've told everyone else who's at the show, but we haven't told the guys watching the show. Well, uh, the new engine is in uh, with the stroker kit, uh, but it still uh, needs a few uh, adjustments. Yeah, it's, it's tuning. Uh, so, yeah, so you got the car back probably a little bit too early for the show. And uh, it was yeah. here uh, Friday and Saturday. Yeah, but it sounded like a lawnmower on the way home, so he brought in the Kia. <laughs> Upgraded. Yeah, just put the dips in that Kia. <laughs> Good fuel economy. Alright, well, um, thank you very much for watching. You can subscribe somewhere here. And if you'd like to watch the video uh, from something else <laughs> down here, check out all the links below for all the people that we've been talking to and and chatting to and, and whatnot. And thank you very much for watching. See ya.